What if you had the opportunity to trade a life someone else chose for you with a life you chose for yourself? Former UC Riverside women's soccer standout Heidi Garrett is out to help women answer just that question. Upon her graduation from UC Riverside, where she was a three-year letter winner, Garrett enrolled in the Riverside Community College Cosmetology Program, where she pursued a passion she had practiced since she was a little girl. I played soccer growing up my entire life. I played since I was four. Although the focus was on soccer and school my entire life, I had a side passion, which was hair and makeup. After a series of fortuitous events, Garrett became an instructor for the Trade Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to restoring victims of sex trafficking and abuse by teaching women the art of hairdressing, manicuring, makeup application, and salon business. A competitive athlete, Garrett is no stranger to mental toughness. Her athletic background makes her the perfect candidate for her current role with the trade. Always ready for whatever lies ahead, going into situations free of expectation. That mental toughness translates into what I do with the trade um, and going to Cambodia and being in a new environment. Those types of things that are indescribable but you know that they're from your background in um, competitive athletics, those are the things that really helped me in going to Cambodia. In the scheme of life, scoring that soccer goal in that game that I played four years ago doesn't matter anymore. But what we're doing with the trade, what the trade is doing matters. You're changing lives. With most, I'd say, third world countries, you're dealing with people who, when I say they would do anything for a dollar, I don't mean that they are desperate. They have no other choice. When they need to provide for their families, they will do anything to, to do that. A lot of our students um, in our cosmetology program, they are either encouraged to do it by their family, or we had a girl whose dad sold her when she was five. One of our students, her husband, told her she had to go and work in a club because they needed more money. A lot of times with third world countries, um, there is a lack of education and opportunity. So I understand the mindset that these women have because the salary that they can make working in a club or a bar, and when I say they're working in a club or bar, I don't mean that they're just serving drinks or food, they're, they're servicing the customers um, sexually. A man comes in and buys a girl. And if it's something they've been doing their whole life and the only thing they've been told they're good at that's the only thing they're gonna wanna do because, well, what else am I good at, you know? So that's where we come in. I was there specifically to teach hairstyling and each instructor kind of would teach their strength or something they felt most comfortable with. I was supposed to teach braiding and here I'm like teaching them just a regular three-strand braid and they're looking at me like, okay, yeah, here, I'll do it for you real quick. Okay, what's next? And I'm like, I feel like I should be sitting in their seat and they should be teaching me. For women who had never been complimented on their character, inner beauty was a foreign concept. The trade made sure that changed. While teaching the skills needed to run a salon, the trade's instructors realized they had an even bigger mission than the one they had set out to accomplish. By them being so skilled in the art of hairstyling, it allowed us to spend more time working on their insides and working on who they are as women. The women, used to hearing how beautiful they looked, had never had someone tell them they were beautiful for any other reason. We really realized the need to show them, hey, you're worth something and you need to start realizing that and believing that in yourself. Because until you do, you will just keep going back to your old life. We really got a chance to build sisterhood and friendship with these women and for me that was the most rewarding thing about the whole trip. When the trade commented on their beauty, it wasn't directed at something superficial. This time it was directed at their hearts. 
you'd be surprised at how easy it is to, with a, such a big language barrier, you wouldn't imagine that you'd be able to laugh and make jokes and cry and hug and talk to people from a different country. I cried all the time <laughs> when I was there and they would make fun of me for it, but it bonded us and seeing some of our students cry for the first time, probably in years, was very special. The trade works from the inside out, teaching women that who they are as a person matters, that inner beauty and the reflection of that beauty on the outside is a woman's strength. you kind of expect to be so different from them because I'm raised here in America and they were raised there in Cambodia. What do we have in common? They've been through horrific things. So you kind of think, well, how can you relate to them if they've spent most of their life doing what they've had to do? After sharing our hearts with them and sharing our lives and our stories and our jokes made us all realize how similar we all are. And one of the phrases that they have there um, is same, same, but different. They use it for a deeper meaning, meaning more so than just, oh, well, these apples are the same, but they kind of are different because this one's green, this one's red. Um, that phrase really just summarizes everything about going to Cambodia and everything about the relationships that we've built with these women and friendships that we've built with these women and realizing that, yeah, we've had completely different pasts, but inside, in our hearts, we're the same. We want to be successful. We want to work hard. We want to do hair and makeup. We want to work in a salon. We want to provide for our families. In all of those important aspects of life, we're all the same. We desire the same things, um, but we come from such different places. Seeing our women who have gone through so much choose to make a different path for themselves has been such an inspiration to me and something that I hope I can pass on to others. Our goal is not for us to be the hero that comes in and saves the world. We really want the people to save their own people. And the only way to do that is to start a domino effect and to start an education process to um, allow women to get an education that will allow them to then affect the next generations and their surrounding communities. So that's our long-term goal. Um, time will tell what how long that will take. Time will tell um, if that's even a realistic goal, but that's what we're working towards because um, we believe in, in these people.